Um, we are going to start our gentle yoga and meditation practice. You're going to need two blocks as well as a belt. Um, bring those blocks and belts closer to you. So when you're laying back, you have easy access to those blocks. But as we start, we're going to lay back. Open your feet up wider than hip width apart and let your inner knees roll in. And then just release back onto your mat. You can place your hands on your stomach or you can leave your hands down on the earth. Whatever feels best for you. And what I want you to do here is just close your eyes if you're comfortable. If not, gaze gently towards the tip of your nose. And when we close our eyes, it allows us to draw the awareness in. This ability to turn off the external world and come in. What do you need in this moment? Feeling your back go heavy to the earth. Your shoulders soften. Feel the connection of your knees touching. The breath moving through the nose. And the sense of softening. Letting go of all that came before and all that will come after. So you can truly be in this present moment. Imagine your thoughts on a cloud and they're floating away from you. Our thoughts like to distract us. So while we're working on this, dropping into the space, moving into meditation, just acknowledge those thoughts and then imagine them floating away on a cloud. Draw your awareness to the breath moving through the nose. Start to move the breath deeper into the body. Feel your chest expand. Feel your belly rise. And when you exhale, just let the body soften back down to the earth. But you're pushing the air out of the body. Letting it come out of the bottom of those lungs. Inhale nice and deep. Belly and chest rises. Exhale, feel your chest release, your belly drawing tight, pushing the air out of the body. You're welcome to move into that Ujjayi breath where you're inhaling and drawing the air against the back of your throat. When you exhale, it's like fogging the mirror, but your lips stay sealed. And sound like the ocean. So imagine your body relaxing at your favorite beach destination. Feel like your breath matches the ebb and flow of the ocean. Imagine you can smell the salty air, that gentle breeze kissing your skin. Stress free. The mind is wandering, bring it back to this breath. We're going to add on to this breath work to keep you a little more focused in this moment. I want you to inhale for three, pause for three, restrict the breath, exhale three, pause and restrict the breath for three. Inhale one, two, three, pause, one, two, 
three, exhale, one, two, three, pause, one, two, three, continue. Move it to four. Again, for four. Notice where you're holding tightness, and can you keep relaxed when you restrict that breath? Ready, inhale for five. Do that again. Five counts for your breath. Move on to six for two rounds. If you notice you can't make it to these bigger numbers, especially when you exhale, don't worry about it. Stick with the number that feels best for you. to seven. Take that inhale, exhale for seven. Decide if you want the restriction by holding your breath for seven. Wandering, imagine your breath. It's like a light moving up your spine. So when you inhale, if you're moving on to eight, imagine it slowly moving up your spine to the top of your head. Pause, let that light shine. And exhale, feel the light move back down your spine. Just different ways to stay connected. To be present. And you finish with your last round of eight. Feel free to return to the normal pace of your breath. Maybe it's back to that Ujjayi breathing and you're back at your ocean destination if you left it. Imagine the sun gently warming the skin. The breeze just keeps you at that perfect temperature. in the body if there's any place that you're still carrying tension. And just imagine with each exhale, it's just melting off the body, releasing into the air. The 
and slowly heel to the feet back in line with the body. Take a nice big inhale through the nose. Open the mouth, sigh it out. Inhale what you need. Exhale out what you don't need. One more time. Slowly heel toe the feet all the way together and release the arms to the side. Just let the arms release and then slowly open that right knee out to the side in this half bound angle. And let's just let the hip release. A lot of times we send a lot of stored energy into our hips. In yoga, our hips are known as our emotional center. So just allowing this release in those hips, softening in the jaw. Inhale to bring the right knee back up. Exhale, open the left knee out to the side. Breathing into that left hip, keeping your right hip on the aiming up to the sun. Inhale, bring that left knee back up to the sky. And if you're comfortable, exhale, open both knees. Supta Parakasana, recline down the angle. Feel free to let your arms release to the earth, to your stomach, or even place your hands on your inner. If you carry this tension in your hips, again, just imagine with your exhale, it's just melting, like you're melting ice to water. Depending on which side you're comfortable with, if you're rolling to the right, bring your left knee to the sky, take your right arm overhead, and let's gently roll our bodies onto our right to the left side. And just take a moment here to relax. And slowly press yourself up into an easy seated pose. Take your time to rise up nice and tall. And coming into easy seated, whether it's staggering the heels, crossing the ankles, or moving to the mid shins. So go ahead and bring my hands to the heart. Before we begin this gentle practice, Let's take three ohms. And don't judge me for my singing. Ready? We inhale. Oh. 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 of the end of all and bring ease one more time. Gently oh. blink the eyes open. Go ahead and release the hands. And start to sway the rib cage side to side. This is where you get to become the student of your body, doing what feels right, relaxing, finding ease in this practice. As we come back to center, let's take a little seated cat and cow. Exhale, round the back, let the chin drop. And inhale, arch the back, let the chin rise to where you're comfortable. Exhale, round. Inhale, arch it back. Listen to your breath. Flow with ease. Take this one more time. A 
And then come to sit nice and tall. Imagine that as tall as you can sit, that your body feels like a mountain that's rooted into the earth, but the rest of you is rising to the sky. And then slowly let the right ear release towards the shoulder. Let your left shoulder go heavy towards your back pocket. Right shoulder stays relaxed. If you'd like, release the left hand to the earth and walk those fingertips out and away from the body. And I'll turn sideways for those of you that are watching. So we get this deeper stretch into the side of the neck and then the option to take your right hand to the side of the head. And just deepening the stretch. Understand more does not always mean better, but are we slouching? Or are we still staying tall and we want to stay tall? Releasing the hand, inhale the head up, exhale the ear to the neck. Imagine your thoughts just draining from your ear. Think of those thoughts floating on a leaf down the stream. We can then release our left hand to the earth, right hand, sorry, and walk our fingertips out and away from the body. Just feel the stretch. How does it feel for you? And if you think, I want a little bit more, bring the left hand up, take it to the side of the head, and enjoy that deeper stretch. Keep lifting the heart to the sky. Use that power of your core to keep you lifted tall. Release your hand, inhale, bring the head back to center. From here, change that lead leg. And as you sit up nice and tall, slowly walk your fingers out and away from the body, tipping forward and pushing into the earth to keep your sit bones from here for rolling up off the floor. Push your hands into the earth, keeping your sit bones anchored. Head and neck relaxes. And as you inhale here and breathe nice and deep, I want you to feel your back body expand towards the sky. And slowly walk those hands back into the body. Roll the shoulders back to sit up nice and tall. Let's inhale, draw the arms up to the sky. Exhale the hands down to the right line. Good. Inhale to rise. Exhale down and through. One more time. Inhale, rise. Exhale down and through. Let's take a moment for some stretches. Go ahead and extend the right leg out nice and long. Let the left leg tuck in. If you need to take a bend to the knee, take a bend to the knee. But from here, inhale, rise up. And exhale, let's just stretch forward and hold. Five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, rise up. If you find your left knee is floating up to the sky, then use that block. Place it under the leg to give that left hip some ease. This time as you rise up, reach your left arm over towards the right leg. Either keep your right arm up in the air to look to the shoulder or release it to the earth and offer your heart to your pinky toe. Inhale, come back up. We're gonna do this two more times. Exhale, reach forward, either leave your arms up in the air or send them down. Again, that heart offering to the toes. And inhale, rise back up. Reach across. Get a little twist here. Our spine is meant to move in all directions. So let's allow this little twist here. Still breathing nice and deep. One more time. Inhale. And then exhale, reach forward. Yeah. Let the head and neck relax. Maybe by round three of this stretch, your body's starting to loosen up just a little bit more. Our hamstrings do a lot for us, and they end up nice and tight, and we want to loosen that up. Inhale up top, and exhale over on a twist. It's not about how 
how far you can reach. Even if you're still tall, knee is bent, taking a little twist here, it's still your twist. Whatever feels best for you. Inhale, come on up nice and tall. And let's change legs. Send the left leg out, right leg in. And again, rotate the belly button towards the knee. Inhale, up nice and tall. And exhale, reach. And wherever this reach takes you, whether your hands are up or down, Inhale, rise up, and reach across. And again, you can have the arm up, looking towards your shoulder, arm is down, whatever feels best for you. Come back to center. Let's do this two more times. Inhale, forward and stretch. She wants to do yoga with us. <laughs> And then let's take the rise up and take that twist, reach over wherever that reach is. Our goal is not the floor, and it's not our foot. It's this ability to lengthen the body as we're stretching. One more time, inhale, rise up. Exhale, stretch forward, release the arms, let the head and neck relax. Can you feel yourself stretch just a millimeter more? Inhale, rise up. Exhale, twist. Slowly come back to center. If you're comfortable bringing both of the feet in, if you need blocks to support those knees, you have horizontal, flat, or no blocks, it's up to you. Just take a moment here, make sure your feet aren't pulled in tight. They're a good foot distance away from your body so you can feel this nice long spine. Sometimes we're so tight it makes us buckle. So taking the fingertips behind the back and lifting up nice and tall. But wherever you're at, whether the hands are behind or at your ankles, just give a little bounce to those knees. Let your butterfly fly. Or take flight. If you like, go ahead and hold on to the shins, let your elbows drop in, and then you can take a little stretch forward. Again, offering the heart towards your toes, let the head and neck relax. And then rise up. One more stretch before we move into a little bit more of our poses. Take your right leg out to the side, tuck your left leg in. This is not about reaching to that right foot. It's taking your hand to the side, whether you need the block and you want to lean into it. But lifting up to lengthen the left side of your body and stretching over to the right. And feel like your left thigh and hip just pull heavy to the floor as you stretch away from that left hip. Inhale, rise up nice and tall, and change legs. Take your right leg in, left leg out. Take your time, and again, use that block if you need it, leaning on it. But otherwise, inhale, lengthen the body, exhale into that side stretch. Hip is heavy, thigh is heavy. Stretch away from the right side. Good. Slowly come back up. Let's place the hands in front. And if you're comfortable, make your way into kneeling. <clears throat> and as we come into kneeling, let's bring some power into our core. So as we move into spinal balance, first let's take some stretches. Step your left toes to the back of your mat and drop back into a calf stretch. So feel your shoulders shift behind your wrists. Come back over your shoulders to lift the left leg up. Now we may have to start here just with the single leg or start to extend your right arm out, finding power in your hold. If you're wiggling and wobbling, it's okay. Where can you tighten up? Can you keep your heel hip high or lower? Be careful of keeping it higher, it arches the back. Let's return the hand and knee to the earth and pause here. Send your right foot back. And then drop back into that calf stretch. 
shifting the weight back over the shoulders, lifting up that left, left right leg. Stay here if this is where your back balance is best. Otherwise, extend that arm out nice and long. Pull the belly into the spine, push the earth away with your hand, your toes or your shin. So toes are turned under or toes are flat, whatever feels best for you. Let's return hand and knee. Watch it now to move this breath with movement. Inhale, right arm, left leg. Exhale, return to the earth. Inhale, left arm, right leg. Exhale, return. Continue to move at a pace that feels best in your body. Keeping yourself present, take this four more times. When you finish your last flow, look to the tips of your fingers and let's meet in puppy pose. So sending your elbows forward, releasing your chest and your forehead. Just imagine your shoulders releasing to allow you to sink deeper towards the mat. Press into the palm of your hands to lift your chest. Slowly walk the hands back underneath the body. While you're here, some of you, since this is a gentle or more of a beginner's class, if you need your blocks, take them in front, stepping the right foot forward, coming to stand, and then bring the left foot forward into Uttanasana forward fold. And sometimes just having something to bring the body away from the floor gives us more ease. The floor comes closer to us with the blocks. Those of you that don't need the blocks or you want horizontal or flat, feel free to take yourselves to the variation. But I'm going to show with using the blocks. Let your head hang like a chandelier. Again, gaze into the knees of the upper thighs to really release that head and neck. We hold it up all day long. Take an inhale and rise up to the sun, nice and careful. And exhale, hands to the heart. Then release the arms to your side. Let your palms aim to your thighs. Yeah. So sway to the right foot. Sway to the left. Sway to the right. Sway to the left. I'll turn and face you guys. <laughs> and as you come back to center, find that equal balance into both feet. Sometimes we don't even realize we're sitting a little heavier in one side than the other. Then inhale, raise your right arm to shoulder height. And exhale, turn that palm to the sky. Good. Inhale, raise the arm up to the ear. Exhale, soften the shoulder. Inhale, lengthen your right ribs away from your hip. When you exhale, slowly slide down that left thigh. Some of us will need to place our hand on our hip to give us a little more support. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, the arm to shoulder height. Inhale, turn the palm down. Exhale, lower towards the earth. Good. Inhale, rise the left arm up, shoulder height. Exhale, turn the palm to the sky, soften the knees. Inhale, rise up towards the ear. Exhale, soften the shoulders. Inhale, rise up. Pull that rib cage away from the hips. And then exhale into that nice, long side stretch. Be careful of pulling forward. Keep your heart lifting to the sky. Inhale, come back up nice and tall. Exhale, lower to shoulder height. Good. Inhale, turn the palm down. Exhale to release. Let's do this one more time each side. Inhale, rise up to shoulder height. Turn the palm. Rise towards the ear. Use your breath. Soften the shoulder. Then reach up top and slowly side stretch. Think of your body like a rainbow. 
and then rise back up. Lower the arm to shoulder height. Turn the palm down to the earth. Release the arm to your side. Good. One more. Inhale, bring the left arm up. Turn the palm to the sky. If I'm moving too fast for your breath, feel free to stay at your own pace. Soften the shoulder. Then lengthen the side body. And then slowly up and over that right hip. Careful of clenching your teeth. Send that energy to your core. These muscles are a lot bigger and stronger than the ones that we're going to use in our face. Inhale, rise up. Slowly down to shoulder height. Turn the palm down. And slow release. When you're ready, both arms rise to shoulder height. Again, soften behind the knees. Turn the palms up. Rise to the sun. And now turn your palms away from the body. And I'm going to turn sideways. I don't want you to sink down to do this. I want you to inhale, lift the heart to the sky. And exhale, little tip back. However it feels, some of us may need to take our hands to our sacrum and give ourselves support here. Then inhale, rise up. We're going to do this two more times. Exhale, stretch the heart to the sky. Squeeze the shoulder blades in and back. Inhale, rise up. Be careful of holding the breath. Inhale, up to the sun. Turn the palms towards each other. Exhale, arms to shoulder height. Inhale, turn the palms down. Exhale, turn the palms And take a little wiggle out. It's time for some balancing work. So a lot of times we're taught tree pose for balancing, but today it'll be a little bit different. What I want you to do is tap your right foot out to the side and lift your heart to the sky. Then extend your left arm out to the sun. And for some of us, we just may be doing a toe tap. For others, when you release that right arm down, be careful of tipping out the window, stay tall. Use your outer thigh muscle to lift the leg. Yeah, and hold for balance, whatever this balance looks like. Then lower the toe, bring the hands in, and stand nice and tall. And again, if you need to shake that out, shake it up. All right, tap the left toe out. Take the right arm on an angle. Either stay here and toe tap, or release the left arm down. Check, are you hinging forward, because you know the leg's gonna lift, or can you stay tall? Power up through the outer leg, and stand tall for balance. And you may be wiggling and wobbling, and that is okay. Our body is finding its power for balance. Release the toe, release the hands, and step in. And shake those legs out. I'm going to turn sideways. Let's take a nice big inhale to the sun. And as you exhale, sit in chair. Utkatasana weight is into the heels. For gentle, we can take our arm shoulder height. Especially if we have restrictions in the shoulders or even hands at the heart. Those of you that want to rise up, feel free to rise up. As we take a twist here, make sure you're sitting into your heels. Bring the left arm forward, right arm back. Be careful of turning your hips. Your hips still stay aiming to the front edge of your mat. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, right arm forward, left arm. Inhale to chair. Exhale to stand tall. Let's go ahead and take our hands to our hips. Moving into a narrow stance, warrior one. And I'll turn and face in the same direction as everyone else. So as we stand up nice and tall, it's not about taking a big step back. Let's go ahead and take this left foot and step it back about two feet or three feet. So both of our feet are on these railroad tracks, both ten toes aiming forward. With your hands on your hips, you can feel your hips staying square. Inhale, open the arms up nice and wide. And on an exhale, you can bring it into eagle. Take the right elbow under the left. And for some of us, it's hugging the shoulders. For others, it's going to be wrapping the hands. You're dropping your elbows to your chest. Rise them up. Since we've been focused on the arms for a moment, are you still bending into this right knee? Finding equal pressure into both feet.
as we release the arms, we can slowly sweep them up to the sun, moving into this narrow stance pyramid, straighten the leg. And as you exhale, draw your hands through the midline and tip forward, hands to the thigh, to the shin, or some of us will use our blocks. But again, this is a narrow stance. Drawing the right hip back, left hip forward. Then take and slide your right hand up to your right hip. Draw the elbow to the side for twisting triangle. And then turn to look to your shoulder, adding that twist. And for some of us in this gentle practice, you're going to keep your hand on your hip. Others, if you want to extend the hand to the sky, it is up to you. But as you release, I want you to bend your knee and rise back up through that warrior one. And then step to the top of your mat. We're going to open our feet out so our heels are on the mat and our toes are off the mat. And inhale, open the arms up to the side. Exhale, into goddess. If you are comfortable, bring your elbows in a little bit more. And we're going to tick-tock. Bring your elbow towards your hip or ribs. Come back up. Tip to the other side. So like you're holding plates, whatever feels right, and you're balancing them and just tipping, feeling this stretch. One more time to each side. Inhale to rise up. And as you exhale, bringing the hands down and through, you can step your feet back onto the mat or heel toe your feet back on. Again, standing nice and tall. Narrow stance, warrior one. Our left foot stays planted. Our right foot steps back just a little bit, and then you bend your knee. Be careful of wanting to turn your foot or lifting your heel. Keep it so your stance is equal. Fits are aiming forward. Front knee bent. Back leg straight. Notice your ribs. Are they flaring? When they flare, your tailbone sticks up. So we want our ribs in, our tailbone release. And again, we can inhale, open the arms up to the side. This time it is left elbow under the right for eagle arms. Garudasana arms. Hug shoulders. Or wrap hands. Elbows up with the chest, off the chest. Front knee bent. Back leg straight. Sometimes we try and go for the largest stance possible, but finding ease in a narrow stance can be just as powerful as your widest stance. On an inhale, release, bring the arms to the sky, and as we prep for this narrow stance pyramid, straighten the leg, and exhale, hinge. Some of us may not go far. We are going to stay up more on an angle. Others, we can come all the way to this flat back. Hands to the thigh, the shin, or feel free to use the blocks. You can reach the crown of your head away from your tailbone, or you can let the head and neck release. Find what works for you. Squeezing your inner thighs like you're holding the block between the legs. Notice what pressure you're putting into the back of that left knee. Do you need to soften just a little bit? As we prep for a twist, first slide your left hand to your hip. And draw the elbow to the sky. Add the twist by looking to the shoulder. And again, notice, did your hips swing out to the side or is it pulling in and back? Hand can extend. Or we can stay right where we're at. Gently bend the knee. Coming through warrior one to rise up. And exhale, step to the top of the mat, coming into Tadasana Mountain Pose. Inhale, sweep up to the sun. Exhale, swan dive halfway into standing airplane. And some of us are going to bend our knees to find ease in the standing airplane. And then rise back up, inhale. This time, exhale into our half forward fold. So as you come down, place your fingers on your shins. Pull the heart away from your tailbone. Are you gripping with your toes or can you soften? And then inhale to chair, Utkatasana. Hips go back and down. On your next inhale, let's move into Virabhadrasana 2, Warrior 2. Step that left foot back, open hips and shoulders. 
And while you're here, take a moment, bring your hands to your hips. Did you go sassy hip? If you did, tap that hip underneath. Is the knee open, aiming to the toes? And for some of us, when we come into this pose, it's hard to keep our hips aligned. So if you have to stagger that right foot and allow the hips to have ease, stagger that foot. And when you're ready, stretch the arms out nice and long. Your mighty warrior drawing a sword, looking over those fingertips. Moving into Parsvatthanasana, side angle, slowly tip forearm to the thigh and stretch here. But if be mindful, maybe it's the hand to the thigh and our other hand to our hip. What works best for you? Did you go sassy with this left hip or is it still drawing towards the right knee? Use that core power to inhale, rise up. Exhale, reverse warrior. Again, hand to a hip to help. Or nice release. Inhale back into warrior two. Straighten the leg. And let's move into triangle trikonasana, hand to the thigh, the shin, a block. Maybe your left hand to your hip if it doesn't serve you to have it up to the sky. From here, inhale, rise. Bending into the knee like you're going back into warrior two. Heel toe the left foot in a few times and then straighten the leg. As you pivot, you're going to hinge to straddle forward. Use your block if you need it. You get a derriere shot of me. <laughs> Let your head hang. It's not about getting to the floor. Maybe our hands are on our thighs. They're supporting on our shins, or our blocks are vertical while we're here. But then slowly start to walk your left foot in when you're ready, depending on where you're at. Turn to your right foot, move your blocks, and step into Uttanasana forward fold. Yeah. Those of you that want to hug the opposite elbow, maybe for a little change today, you can bend your knees and send your chest to your thighs. Really support your back here. Maybe grab behind your calves if your knees are bent. Inhale to rise up. Exhale to sit in chair. Wherever chair pose takes you. Remember, our knees should not be pulling us forward. We should be sitting back into those heels. And then take a nice step back with your right foot, however big that step back or small is going to be, and watch those hips. Take your hands to your hips. Feel your body. Are they sassy or are they aligned? And then reach nice and long. We can turn and lightly gaze over our left fingertips. So equal pressure into both feet. What does it feel like if you're trying to pull your heels towards each other? And as you hold that power, let's move into side angle, Parasvapanasana, slow tip to the side. But are you tipping from your hips by shifting? Or are you tipping from your core? And I want you to tip from your core. Nice long stretch here. Where do you need to take the arms for your pose? Inhale to rise up. Exhale, reverse warrior. Again, where do you want the hands to be for this stretch? Heart is lifted. Gazing to the fingers, straight ahead or down to your back foot. Rise up. I'm sure your left quad is singing to you. And let's tip into triangle. Slide your back against the wall and slowly tip. Hand to thigh, shin. Again, we can always use a block. Let's come back up through warrior two. Shorter stance for those of you that need a shorter stance. And then turn your left toes. Let's take our hands to our hips and slowly hinge halfway into this airplane straddle. 
We can stay here and place our hands on our thighs. We can slide them to our shins. We can use our block or fold to the earth. Straddle fold. Those of you that took a narrow stance and you want to feel maybe a little bit more, you can walk your feet out just a little bit wider. But again, let your head hang like a chandelier. Take a moment to shake your head, yes. And Make your way into a kneeling lunge. And all of this is a transition. So if you have your blocks, I'm going to turn to face to the other side of my mat. We're going to release. Once you have your blocks close by, place them on your mat. You don't have to sit like me. We're just transitioning. And we're going to do an assisted bridge. Now, if you don't have blocks, you don't have to use them. If you want to use books, go ahead and use books. Just be careful that the covers aren't going to slide on the book. And from here, we're going to place our feet on the blocks. And again, this is option. If you don't have blocks, it does not matter. You don't have to do this. Bridge pose can be done on the floor. When you lay all the way back, make sure your middle fingers can graze the blocks. Feet should be about hip distance apart. And use your palms, little tuck of the shoulder blades, the back of your arms. It's not a push from the back of your head. It is a lift. And as we push into our feet, we use the back of our arms for support. And then what if you squeeze your inner thighs towards each other, like you're holding another block between your legs? And then slowly lower these hips back down. So maybe a different sensation for those of you that are used to doing your feet flat on the floor to come into bridge. Let's do that two more times. Inhale, rise up. Squeeze the inner thighs, but now, without actually moving your feet, imagine you're pulling your heels to touch your glutes. What does that do to your hamstrings, to the legs? Then release and slowly bring your hips back down to the earth. On this last one, I want you to see how high you can take your hips. So when you're ready, start the process of lifting your hips to the sky. Make sure you are not pushing into the back of your head. You may feel like your chest is coming closer to your chin. Notice your feet. Are they glued and anchoring you to the block, or are you rolling to the pinky edge of your foot? And then when you're ready, slowly take your hips back down to the earth. Take a pause here, inhale, let it out. Once you move your blocks and you can just kick them off your mat if you'd like. And now place your feet on the floor, same thing, but I want you to feel the difference. Those of you that didn't have blocks and you were already on the floor, it's just another round. Set yourself up, inhale, lift your hips. Squeeze your inner thighs. If you didn't move the blocks too far away, grab one, place it between your inner thighs or between the legs and see what that feels like. And then when you're ready, release, and you can release that block off to the side. And again, let's float our hips to the sun. Are you using the back of the arms instead of your head? And again, imagine you're pulling your heels to your glutes, your bottom, without actually moving your feet. Are you still breathing? And then our hips descend back down to the mat. And on this last one, for those of you that like to interlace your hands underneath your body, take it there. Inhale, rise up. Maybe you want to lift the hips a little higher. Where's your maximum height and bridge? And then any variations for the arms. You want to walk your shoulder blades in a little bit more. Again, this is a gentle practice. But some of us like more. But wherever you're at, start your release. Draw your knees over your hips, open the arms. First, do a little twist over to the left. Come back to center. A little twist over to the right. Come back to center. And a nice hug of the shins to the body. Let's 
Release the left foot to the earth. And if you have a belt or a towel, I want you to grab that belt or towel and take it to the ball of your right foot. And as you extend your leg to the sky, bring your elbows down to the mat. So let this be a chest opener. You can create tension by pulling the belt down into your foot and pushing your foot up into the belt. So just because we're using the belt doesn't mean we go lazy. We still want to use the power of our bodies. Some of you will keep your left knee bent and your foot on the floor. Others may choose to slide the left leg out. As you release the tension, if you have the belt or towel, take it into your right hand, open the left leg, arm out to the side, and as if you're opening a door, you're not sure what's on the other side, slowly open that leg out to the side. And it may go just a little bit. You may have to bend your knee and hold the inner thigh. For those of you not using a belt or a towel, but be careful, this left hip loves to roll to where the right leg is going. So push this left hip bone back down to the floor and keep that glute sealed to the earth. Notice, is your chin pulling up to the sky, or is your chin neutral, parallel to the mat? All these little things. Just breathe and see where the body takes you. Come back up to center and change hands. As you bring your right hand down, first let's do an IT band stretch. So all I want you to do is take that right big toe and aim it outside your left shoulder. So our hips have not left the mat, and then Pull your right hip down and away from your rib cage. So just feel yourself turn that hip away from your ribs. If this is too much, adjust where you're putting that left foot. Belly button is drawing you down to the mat, like it's keeping you anchored to the earth. If you would like to go into a full spinal twist, Start to follow that right leg over to the left, rolling onto that left hip. Keeping your right shoulder on the mat with the option of turning and looking. And remember, this can be done with a bent knee without a belt. Slowly come back to center. Let's go ahead and open that belt and place your left foot on the belt and bring your right foot down. Now your elbows are up in the air, so what I want you to do is slide your hands down the belt or towel. Some of you may have to have your hands on a small towel. But if you can, bring your elbows to the floor if you're holding the belt. Right knee bent with the foot on the floor to start. And then whenever you're ready, you can send that leg out. Keeping power in the core, but where can you find yourself releasing tension you may be carrying? Are you clenching your teeth to try and stretch deeper? And if so, let it go. This is a journey, not a race. Take your time. Let's move into that hip opener. Take your left hand to the belt, right arm out to the side, and start to open that left leg nice and slow. See where it takes you. And again, pay attention to that right hip. Where is it going? It should be pulling down to the mat, staying on its own side of the mat. Stretching is a nice way for myofascial release. It's the first line of releasing that fascia. Inhale, bring that leg to the sky, change hands. Right now on the belt, left arm down. Remember, IT band stretch, big toe right outside the right shoulder, and drawing your left hip away from your ribs. When 
you ready to go deeper into a spinal twist. If you're not twisting, stay here. Otherwise, follow that left foot over to the right, rolling onto the right hip. Be careful of lifting your left shoulder just because you want to get farther. Keep that left shoulder blade on the mat, and again, the option of the knee being bent as we take this stretch. Can you still drop your left hip away from the ribs and lengthening in the side body? Gently come back to center with that left leg and go ahead and release the belt. And just take a moment to hug both legs into the body, little walk from side to side. Think of yourself being in reclining child's pose, so big toes to touch. Take your hands to your shins if you can or to your hamstrings. And just open those knees outside your ribs. And just let your thighs drop heavy towards the earth. And you can assist it by holding your shins or holding your hamstrings. Some of you may even slide your fingers underneath the back of your knees. Whatever feels right, play with it. Gently release and bring your feet to the earth. We're going to revisit this Supta Baddha Konasana like we did in the beginning of class. But first, slowly start to open the right knee out to the side and just let that hip and knee release, keeping your left hip aiming to the sun. Hands can go wherever you want. You take that right hand to your inner thigh, onto your belly, onto the earth. Slowly draw the right knee back up to the sun and open the left knee out to the side. Left hand can go to the inner thigh or wherever it feels best for you. Gently bring that left knee back up to the sun. And again, if you need those blocks, feel free to grab those blocks and use them for Supta Bhagavanasana, right? You can support underneath the knees at horizontal, horizontal, flat, or just let gravity take over. Hands to the inner thighs or resting on your belly. For some of us, if you have the range of motion in your shoulders, take your fingers into this diamond. So your fingers and your thumb touch, and then slowly release those hands over the head to the earth. So now you have this diamond with your fingers, your elbows, and your knees. Let this be your moment to drop into this space a little deeper. If this bothers your shoulders, your elbows, or your wrists in any way, release the arms to where it is comfortable. But right now we have this continuous flow of energy through our bodies, from our fingers to our toes. Feel this energy travel through the body, bringing ease, calm, peace. When you're ready to release into your final pose of Shavasana, Go ahead and let the arms release and slowly let the legs extend out to the corners of the mat. Feel your body go a little heavier here. Relaxing, letting go.
So we all fingers and toes, bringing movement to your body. If you like, you can stretch the arms overhead for a reawakening stretch. And then just take a moment to bend the knees. Bring your palms together, rock the palms, bring heat to the hands. Create enough heat, and then gently place the palms over the eyes. When you're ready, gently roll the body to one side. And slowly press up into that easy seated pose. I invite you to bring your hands to the heart. We're going to finish the class with a mantra, Om Shanti 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 He, meaning Om Peace, Peace, Peace. So let's take that inhale. Om Shanti Shanti from my heart to yours, namaste. Have a wonderful rest of the weekend and day.